Hi everyone. So I haven't really done videos like this before, but um, I think it would be kind of nice because there is a lot of people who are feeling some kind of low energy in the air right now. There's not a lot of sun in the sky right now. It's mid-December, December 21st, winter solstice is soon upon us. And the combination of that, and I know a lot of people have been talking about Mercury retrograde, Venus retrograde, so the chi is not exactly flowing nice and strong. There's some heaviness, there's some stagnant energy in the air. And um, one beautiful thing about these yogic practices is that no matter what's happening in the external world, we can really um, have a nice, strong, fortified sense of inner sunniness, of inner chi blossoming from within us. It's almost like a well deep at the base of our spine of amrita. It's like of gold. And we can really tap into that nectar and get it flowing strong in our body so we feel pretty connected no matter what happens in our day. Um, so why don't we just hop right in. I'm wearing a scarf and a hat in Chinese medicine as well as Ayurvedic medicine. It's very important to cover the throat when it's so cold outside. It's like 12 degrees outside today here in New England. Um, because it weakens the immune system and colds can literally come in through the back of the throat, it's more that it just weakens the immune system, right? In Western medicine, we know this to be true. And the hands and the feet get very cold in the winter time, not a lot of circulation, the blood is more coagulated. So getting those really kind of warmed up and started is a great place to start. Um, but basically the practice I'm going to be doing is all about the solar plexus, opening that up. We're inside right now, so I can take these things off. And um, we're also going to do some nice breathing pranayama practices um, to get the chi really kind of tuned in. There's nothing like a strong pranayama practice to really tap you in. So let's start with a little chanting, sound vibration to get everything open. Heart lifted, solar plexus open, right? Because when we're rounding... It's like we're closing up that inner sunniness. We feel bad when we have that nice strong man chest, right? nice strong man. Then we feel a lot happier, a lot um, positive. So let's start deep breath in, fill the belly, fill the chest, fill the throat. Exhale, feel the throat empty, chest fall, belly draws down. This breathing really gets things going. Inhale, fill the belly, fill the chest, fill the throat. Exhale, feel the throat empty, chest empty, belly draw into the spine. Imagine as you inhale, like an elevator rising up is filling the bottom floor, middle floor, top floor. And as you exhale slowly, top floor empties, middle floor empties, bottom floor empties. Continue this wave as I'm speaking. Continue this beautiful filling up from the bottom up, emptying from the top down. Start to feel the micro tension in your body soften. Feel your face soften, your arms and legs soften, especially as you continue these nice, long, slow exhalations. A lot of the times, the trick to just getting the endorphins flowing in the body is to simply soften the energy of the body, of the physical body. And so when we have a lot of cortisol, we're running around doing our Christmas shopping, whatever we're doing, kids are stressing us out, whatever. It's like we don't feel those endorphins, we don't feel that fuzzy medicine. When you are feeling that way, see if you can just kind of soften your energy a little bit. Take a long, slow, deep breath. Think of those little angels and devils on one shoulder and the other. The devil is like cortisol, right? Every bad decision we've ever made, a lot of cortisol running through us, Good decisions made with a lot of oxytocin, serotonin, endorphins flowing through us. Good. One more deep breath. Just as you're doing, you're continuing. Let's do a nice sound release. Big inhale. Maybe one hand on the heart. <sighs> Flushing out stress. One more time. Big inhale. Fill up. Wow. 
last one. Inhale. Ah. No wrong sound. Whatever comes out, whatever feels therapeutic, that's where we want to be. Because learning and benefit is in staying present to the moment and to what we feel called that we need in our own bodies, right? Once that solar plexus feels like it's ringing like a bell, let's bring our right hand to our nose. I wouldn't mirror, but I'm not supposed to do it the wrong way either. So I'm not gonna mirror you guys. Just remember, left hand is making the okay symbol. Chin mudra, this locks in the chi we're about to cultivate. And the right hand is in Vishnu Mudra. Those two piece fingers tuck down. Ring finger controls left nostril. Thumb controls right nostril. So the medicine is truly in the hold. So as you're holding, you're gonna try to feel really relaxed, allowing yourself to feel the sensation of that nice fuzzy energy of the chi awakening in the body, right? So let's try it. Left inhale for three, Two, one, close both nostrils, hold. As you're holding, see if you can feel the body, physical body softening, feel the swirling of the chi. Good, right exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one. Right inhale, filling from the belly all the way up and hold. Cultivating chi, cultivating inner sunniness. Good. Left exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one. Left inhale, let's try harder. Three, two, one, hold. Holding a little longer. The ratio is one to four in the hold to two on the exhale. But one, two, two is okay too if you're a beginner. Right exhale, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Right inhale, four, three, two, one. Hold. As you're holding, it's like you're holding on to gold, to amrita, the most precious substance in the world. Prana, breath, is so much more than just oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange. It's your microcosm fusing with the macrocosm, right? So we can utilize this breath wisdom to really realign things. Left exhale, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Left inhale, four, three, two, one, hold. When I teach, I feel my teachers teaching through me. I spent a lot of time in India, very incredible teachers, and I feel that, that wisdom. 3,000 year old science this is. Right exhale, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Right inhale for four, three, two, one. Cultivating that chi, hold. Keep that right shoulder relaxed. Don't get tense there, feel soft in the body. That is key. On your exhale, left side, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Release, good. Both hands in chin mudra. Take a deep breath in slowly from the belly, filling all the way up through the chest, up through the throat and hold. On your slow exhale, exhale for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So now we're doing it through both nostrils one more time. Fill up from the bottom, up. Hold, you could create an additional lock to cultivate more chi by tucking chin to chest. Feel the throat constrict, tongue pressed to the palate of the mouth. Feel that nice strong buzz. You will feel it if you're doing this. Go ahead and release the tongue, release the throat, and exhale slowly, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. One more time, inhale, feel the belly, feel the chest, feel the throat, hold, chin to chest, throat constricts, tongue pressed to the roof of the mouth. Feel that lock, feel that buzz. You will feel amazing after this. And even if you do it and you don't, you will in time. 
It takes some time to really get those meridians flowing, the chi flowing. Doubt is a big blocker. The more you trust your teacher, the more benefit you will attain. Untuck the tongue away from the roof of the mouth, chin away from the chest, slowly exhale out with control. You're releasing amrita, gold, the most precious substance in the world. So do so slowly. Good, beautiful. Let's do a couple others. These are all really simple things anyone can do. If sitting as I'm sitting is too much for you, you don't have to be sitting like this. I work with seniors, we sit in chairs. The most important thing is that the chest is upright, the shoulders are relaxed, the head is loose, right? The only thing working is the little muscles in the mid back to keep you nice and tall. Everything else is soft. Okay, so you're holding onto your knees or if you're sitting in a chair, your hands are on your lap. Inhale, you're gonna really arch the whole spine like an accordion. On your exhale, round. This really gets the whole spine loose. Big inhale, arch every vertebrae, every disc gets a stretch between it. Exhale, round. So we're doing full range of motion. So much benefit for spine health here in doing this. solar plexus, right? It's a chakra, all different chakras. The yogis knew about chakras before they knew that the throat chakra actually is good for thyroid and the third eye stimulates pituitary gland function and heart chakra, of course, heart and nervous system, circulatory system. So these places, these energy centers, it's not just a lot of hoopla, it really has medicine. Good, same thing, still point A to point B, but we're gonna take a spiral circular movement so the sides of the vertebrae get a lot of benefit right keep going it's like you're spiraling around keep the shoulders soft people tend to shrug them up towards the ears I notice in my classes and I'm always telling them keep those shoulders soft this is so good for spine health one more and then switch directions Breathing out as you come around and back. Breathing in as you come around and forward. Let's try it with breath. The breath is always leading the movement. So it's a true moving meditation. The breath, such a bridge between mind and body, between yin and yang, effort and release. Right? Good. Let's just do a couple more things to really get the solar plexus open. Okay. Cat cow is another really nice one. You're on your hands and fingers. But I'm walking back so you can see my hands. Your fingers are spread wide. Right? And your shoulders are right over those wrists. Knees are right over the hips. So you're stacking things really nicely. You're gonna inhale, let the chin lift up, tailbone up. On your exhale, you're rounding completely the full spine, letting the head really tuck under mid spine high. Breathing in as you expand here. Exhale as you round. Do two or three more of these. Get the blood and the chi flowing through the whole spine. Keep synchronizing with the breath here as I'm speaking. The more you bring your breath into your practice, the more benefit you'll receive, the more present you'll feel with everything we're doing. Sometimes people who have a strong practice, whether it is playing music or doing yoga or whatever your practice may be, once they've been doing it for a long time, they feel like it's a little bit like visiting the same river twice. But if we stay present with everything we're doing and with the people in our lives, then there is constant learning happening. Okay, next time you're in a rounded position, let's create some nice circular movements for the joints. Again, in the winter time, our joints and our extremities get cold. So as you inhale, come around and forward. As you exhale, come around and back. Feel the knees and wrists get benefit. Shoulders and hips. You might even hear some nice snap, crackle and pops. I have a lot of chiropractor friends. Now this is not a bad sound, switch directions. This is simply gas trapped in the joints, escaping to increase and improve mobility. It's a 
wonderful, wonderful thing. Get the chi moving there. And with everything we do in yoga class or with any class you ever take, of course, listen to your body first and foremost. If something doesn't feel right, listen to that, your first teacher. Good. Come back to center. Feel the knees widen, toes touching. Extend right back into child's pose. Hips back nicely. Forehead all the way down to your mat. Elbows relax, heavy down. This is a good one, stay in that pose. This is a good one for stress relief, especially if you're doing a lot of holiday running around, right? So come right into it. it feels so good in it. You can always put like a pillow under your head if you feel like you can't touch the ground comfortably due to flexibility issues. Take long, slow breaths. Feel your shoulders relax. Feel your arms heavy. And again, see if you can tap into the energy of softening the whole body, all the micro tension. A bolster like this, just between the knees, can be quite nice as a modified child's pose. Imagine that you are a child returning to its mother. Big, slow inhale, fill the belly, fill the chest. As you exhale, feel your arms soften like you're allowing them to relax into warm sand. Feel your face soften, head heavy. Energy of the legs as if they're softening into warm sand. Let's take another little sound release here. Big inhale. Shy. One more. Nice and loud. Inhale. Mm. My whole class sometimes sounds like orcas, a symphony of oceanic little orcas. It's so beautiful. One more time. Mm. Great. And then come right up. I'm gonna just do a couple more simple ones and then we'll be done. This is not intended to be a whole class, just kind of to give you a little holiday and cold winter de-stress. Okay, really simple. Shoulders lift up towards the ears. Shrug them nice and strong and then exhale back and down. Inhale forward and up. Exhale back and down. So really just listen to the breath. Inhale forward and up. Follow your breathing. Exhale back and down. Last one. Interlace the fingers at the low back. As your tailbone does not arch, right? You don't want to do that. You want to keep that tailbone down, that low back flat. Just Squeeze the shoulders towards each other like you're juicing a lemon, making lemonade here. Shoulders into each other, squeezing, maybe the pinkies lift back. The palms kissing, the elbows straight, it's secondary. We tend to pitch our heads forward. See if you can kind of extend the sternum, the solar plexus up, the chin up, open the throat for three. Always make sure the breath, the prana can flow through. A strap can be used here, your handy dandy scarf. A little slack out if the shoulders are really tight. Nice way to modify. See the space I have here between them? Two more breaths, feeling that nice extension of the solar plexus lifting up, of the tailbone staying rooted. Little movement here, loosen ligaments and tendons, kind of nice. And then release. Good. Very nice. Lastly, these are kind of like people don't take them seriously because they're so simple. But they, I have a lot of students who are in their old age and they can, they have a very limited range of motion. They can't turn their heads very far. We do this every time. Their range of motion is amazingly improved. Okay? Really simple. You're just inhale, lifting your chin up, throat opens, chest opens. Exhale, keeping the chest lifted, drop the chin to chest. Two more, full range of motion. 
This is yoga for everybody. So often people say, oh, I'm not flexible. I'm not cut out for yoga. That's exactly who yoga is meant for. Last one, and you'll notice that your range of motion improves as you move along. And with the chin to chest, roll your right ear to your right shoulder. I will mirror you here for this. Feel that side neck open, inhale. Exhale, chin to chest, left ear to left shoulder. Notice I don't go all the way around. I just feel that beautiful stretch. I breathe into it, all this prana, all this chi, and then I swish to the other side. Keep going and notice where you feel the tension, pinpoint it if something is blocked. So often people that don't have a lot of body awareness, they feel like crap in their bodies and they don't know why or where exactly. One beautiful thing about this practice is you get to know your body really well and it is only in identifying exactly where something feels tight that you can then address it. That goes for everything in life. If something in your life isn't quite right, you can only address it by really tapping into where and what. Good, release the head back to central. Fingertips are gonna overlap, just the fingertips, right behind where your neck and your shoulders meet. Right where your necklace would hang. Push into that point where your fingertips are overlapped, really push. Feel your elbows pull forward. So now your hands, your palms are kind of cupping the back of the neck softly. By your elbows pushing forward, your point pressing in, now we can lift our chin up way further than normal because we have this beautiful support. This is a deep stretch. Three big breaths here, big inhale, draw from the base of the spine up, on your exhale, soften into it by maintaining. Good, one more time, inhale. Exhale, and last one, big inhale. Now you don't wanna just pull your head back up. Use your hands, feel your pinkies, push the skull up, really just the hands are working. That's what brings the head back to neutral. Because as my chiropractor friend explained, is when you're stretching the neck, especially, so much. You don't want to then use those same muscles you just opened to then do that strong movement, right? You want to kind of use your hands to guide it back up and then those muscles are just kind of a little more open. It's kind of nice. Good. Let's do another spinal twist. Twists are a wonderful way to tap into your chi. So sweep your left hand high. You can even drop your right fingertips behind you to the side a little bending into that bottom elbow and feel a good, beautiful side body stretch here. That top shoulder draws back. Feel the hip open, maybe even pulsing into it if the ligaments and tendons feel tight. Take another deep breath in and then grab that opposite knee. Press that knee away. If you're seated in a chair, you're just pushing the outer thigh away. You're grabbing the edge of the chair and using these two points to pull and push like leverage, right? If you don't have a chair and you're like me on the floor, fingertips are behind you. Plug down into those little suction cups. Shoulder away from the ear like your crown is being pulled to the ceiling, neck is long. Press deeper, spiral and rinse. Imagine like you're wringing out a towel. You're rinsing out the spine. Big inhale, now that the alignment is all in place, focus on the breath, pull up from the base of the spine to the crown. On your exhale, rinse deeper. Inhale, draw the amrita up from the base to the crown. Exhale, rinse deeper. Imagine that the spine is an open channel that you can breathe through like a column, an open column. Breathe through every vertebrae, every disc, drawing that nectar right up, that flow of open akasha of space. Take another breath, rinsing. Exhale, release. Right hand to the sky. Fingertips behind you and back a little bit. Feel your 
your top arm, reach up and over, pulsing into that hip a little bit. My mama tummy's sticking out a little, that's okay. And just go ahead, love yourselves, love your bodies, love who you are always. Once that side body opens, grab that opposite knee, stretch that back arm back, either grab the edge of your chair, plug down to reach up. Yoga is so much of a yoking of opposites. You push down to, to gel up, right? The union of effort and release, the yoking of opposites, the merging of the microcosm with the macrocosm using breath and alignment. Deep breath in, feel the spine lengthen, exhale, rinse deeper. That means push this knee away more. This is an active twist. Three long breaths here. Inhale, open column, breathing up through that spine, through the neck, through the crown. Exhale, rinse deeper. If you have a senior in your life, sign them up, help them sign up. Allow them to empower to sign up for yoga class. There's so many great senior centers that have that now. Tai Chi, yoga, so good. It keeps the mind sharp. Keep the blood and the chi flowing. Good, one more, nice little rinse. All people, all people. And then exhale, release. Beautiful, okay, let's do one last restorative pose and then a little mini shavasana. The other benefit I should have mentioned about alternate nostril breathing practice is that it's like we have these two rivers flowing down on either side of the spine, right? And they're very much related to your right brain, to your left brain, to balance and harmony in your own beingness. So when we create that nice alternate nostril breathing practice, it's like we're harmonizing our two nadis, that is what they are called, and our two energy flows, right? The yin, the yang, all of that. This is a very simple restorative pose and one that you can relax into. It's another twist. Let's relax down, arms out, nice and wide, soles of the feet together, knees apart. Now I told you I've never done this before, um, not really, so I hope you can see me. I'm just taking a quick little hip opener because sometimes in being in the moment, um, I'm planning something else, but this is kind of telling me that this is right right now. You can put a block underneath the outer knees to feel the hips kind of roll open if this is too much. But if you can just allow the weight to do the work, this is a very yin pose. The more you relax and let gravity do all the work, the better. Big inhale. On your exhale, feel your legs as if they're dropping into that warm sand. Arms, heavy hands, soft face, relaxed. All around the jaw and eyes, soft, soft. Head heavy, neck soft. Three big breaths, fill the belly, fill the chest, fill the throat. Inhale. On your exhale, slowly flushing out. Big inhale, fill up. Exhale slowly out, feel the hips dissolving open one more time, so nice. Now let's come into the pose I initially had intended. Right knee comes into chest, grab that right knee with your left hand, okay? First you want to really spiral the head to face towards the right here, towards this right stretched out arm. The knee comes up and over, so that hip peels away from the ground, and as the hips stack vertically, the shoulders are kind of aligning horizontally, right? That's what creates the twist. Sometimes you feel this right shoulder way away from the ground. You would kind of just jam the left elbow down, feel the left shoulder draw out a little more, and then flatten everything nicely. Sometimes that's necessary. If this is too deep, you could bring both knees up and over right towards your nine o'clock. 
So you want them kind of in line with the belly button. You don't want those knees pointing way down as I've seen commonly in beginners. If this is too much, put a block underneath between your knees or a pillow. With the hand weighing down the knees and the right ear falling, surrendering towards the ground, once you are in alignment, let gravity do all the physical work. Physical body relaxed, breath stays strong. Inhale, fill from the bottom up. side. If you had the top knee staggered higher than the bottom, then repeat the same thing. Right hand weighs down that left knee. So now the head is spiraled over towards the left. And with that arm extended, the ear falls heavy, heavy down. Feel your limbs sinking into that warm sand. Feel everything drop, the micro tension drop. Face soft, endorphins flowing. Big inhale from the base of the spine, up that column, through the neck. Every vertebrae gets cleared. Every little disc has spaciousness created with the prana charging through it, flowing like a river. Big inhale. On your exhale, feel the release of tension, of stress, too. Take another long, beautiful breath in. Exhale slowly out. So nice. She is flowing strong. Feet wide apart is another beautiful, easy pose. Arms out, windshield wiper the knees side to side. See, I always say I'm gonna do a couple poses and then I do more. Because once you're doing it, you feel so good. So even, it's a good trick. Tell yourself you're only gonna do like a stretch or two. Before you know it, you're gonna feel so good you're rolling all around the ground like I am. So the knees are windshield wipering, right? Feet wide, knees drop left and right. Maybe the head revolves in the opposite way that the knees are going. This is so nice for the low back. You're massaging all the fascia in the low back. If you're on the road a lot, this is amazing. Do it at a rest stop if it's summertime, spring, fall. You can do it right on the ground anywhere in an airport. Right? Bring your yoga mat with you everywhere you go. Then pull the knees into one shoulder and around and into the other shoulder. Massaging the fascia in your mid-back. So nice. So often we do not have someone to massage us. Give it to your own damn self. Good. Plant the feet. One more thing for the neck. With the feet planted nicely in the back, nice and flat on that nice alignment of the hard ground. You could even do feet wide, knees touching to keep the low back even more open. As the hips roll forward, the low back opens. Hands behind the head, like a pillow. This is for the neck. Shoulders soften like molasses. So those elbows that might be up, Relax them heavy, heavy down. Feel the shoulders spread like molasses. Now, this is the active part, right? Everything relaxed so far. Chin to chest. Plug the head into the hands like a plug into a socket. Right, did you hear me? Head pushes down with the chin to chest. Keep that firm, even pressure. The whole neck is so open. There's so much nice traction here. My chiropractor and a friend and I were talking about how good this is. Big inhale, feel the prana flowing through the neck. 
a lot of women especially, I don't know why, but I've found this to be true in all my yoga classes, hold a lot of tension and stress in their neck and shoulders. Maybe all the times we were hung as being witches for speaking the truth. I don't know how. <laughs> that seems to be the go-to spot. Keep the chin down, keep the head plugging down, keep breathing through that neck nice and open. One more time. Mm. This is so empowering for the little muscles around the neck. Great, release. Hook the thumbs, stretch the legs, long stretch, low back plugs into the ground like a plug into a socket. One more time. Grab behind the thighs, rock and roll up to seated. If this movement is available, if not, just roll over to one side and push yourself up. You can take a little Shavasana here. It might feel really nice. Shavasana is like you're basically just laying down on the ground, letting your feet flop open to the sides, letting your palms face up. Imagine like you're laying on a beach, right? So I'm gonna sit up so you can hear me, but you do this, try it. Lay down on the ground. Let your feet just flop open. Let your palms face up. If you do have a bolster like this, a beautiful way to get your solar plexus open is that you're sitting on the floor. With this right up to your low back, your rolled up yoga mat works too, but the rolled up yoga mat has to be a little further because they're shorter. You want basically the upper back lifted. Palms face up, so those shoulders are rolling down the sides, and look at all this nice, poor posture countering that's happening. Right, so that's another option to regular Shavasana. Breathe in, so the knees are tented, so you don't have to worry about holding the knees up. They support each other, they can relax. Okay, you're in that position or you're in Shavasana. Very slowly, take a very deep breath in. On your exhale, feel your toes and your feet soften their micro tension. Feel them sinking into that warm sand. Picture that beautiful golden beach. Sun has heated it up. Limbs start to soften down, thighs, shins, calves, inhale. As you exhale, the legs sink into that warm, soft sand. Deep breath in. On your exhale, feel your upper back, mid back, low back, soften the micro tension. Sinking into that warm sand. Remember, you're laying down. I'm just sitting up so you can hear me. Inhale, fill the belly, fill the chest. Exhale, feel the belly and chest soften. Now this is a good place that if you have anything happening with your health, your lungs, your internal organs, I want you to try this. Once you are so relaxed and your endorphins are flowing strong like they are after this beautiful pranayama we did, after this beautiful yoga alignment we did, right? This is the time, this is the chance you have to use your chi, to direct your chi right where you need it. So I want you to visualize that place in your body that maybe has that historical injury or that health issue, right? And take a deep breath in as you flood your prana there. Fill the belly, fill the chest, send your chi there. As you exhale, flush out that stagnant energy. Don't let anybody glue health issues to you. Don't let anybody even label health issues, diagnose you. That is too sticky of a vibration. Everything is transient. Everything is constantly changing. The Qigong masters knew this. Big inhale, fill the belly, fill the chest, fill the throat, send your prana to work. Rip off limitations, glass ceilings, doubt. This is working, this is effective. As you exhale, feel your chi go to work to flush out the stagnant energy. The body knows how to heal itself. Inhale, don't let anyone take that power away from you. On your exhale, flush out that stagnant energy. One more time, inhale, flood prana right in. 
As you're relaxing on the ground here, exhale, feel yourself flush out, any last stagnant energy. Now as you inhale, imagine bright light moving in, empowering, strengthening, health, perfect health, perfect wholeness. One more time, big inhale, saturate it with light. Program your cells to repair your body. On your exhale, release. Feel your arms sinking heavy, hands and fingers soften into that warm sand. Shoulders and neck so soft. Fuzzy, fuzzy endorphins flowing, flowing. Head heavy, heavy. Muscles around the jaw so soft, around the eyes so soft that not only does the skin feel more relaxed, but the sinuses feel more open. Right at the bridge of the nose, feel that. Once you are relaxed from head to toe, stay here in Shavasana. Keep the breath flowing, you're awake but relaxed. Stay in this restoration, this medicine, there's so much medicine here. This is the real nectar right here. Sachitananda Murtae Nishprapanchaya Shantaya Shri Shivananda Yatin Namaha Shri Amamritanda Yatin Namaha Om Namah Shivaya Gurave Sachitananda Murtae Nishprapanchaya Shantaya Amamritan dayate namaha, mamagaya te namaha. Om sahana bhavatu sahano bonaktu sarve dyam karavai tejas vina badirtamastu ma vidhichavi. Om shanti 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 ari om shanti. Shanti, Shanti, Hari Om, peace, 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 peace. Most powerful one, Nam, Yoho, Renge, Kyo, Nam, of Shavasana is that you are as relaxed as you would be into a 30-minute nap, but yet you are awake and aware. So I, every time I go to New York City, I go to Dharma Mitra Center, and this is a man who's well into his late 70s, maybe possibly 80s, and he practices traditional Indian style yoga, a lot of Ayurvedic ancient techniques, pranayama, intuitive, unlocking your intuitive abilities. He teaches yoga nidra. Yoga nidra is basically an hour long shavasana. It gives you the equivalent of eight hours of sleep. These mini shavasanas that we do here in the West, they give you like a 20 minute power nap. Start to very slowly deepen your prana. You're still laying down, you're breathing, inhale. Feeling all your subtle senses awakening. Imagine like you're taking a deep breath in through every pore on your skin, inhale. Exhale, 
The older we get, the more people stop coming on the floor, rolling around, doing headstands, swinging on the swings. All these movements are so good for brain health. Keep getting on the ground. Don't stop. Don't ever stop moving. Big inhale, stretch your body long. Exhale, curl over to one side, right? So as you're awakening, stretch. On your exhalation, roll over to one side, curled up. Give yourself a little snuggle. Give yourself one last little ounce of love. Pound, love by the pound of the heart. So, so rarely people give us the acknowledgement for all that we do, especially when we're doing a lot in the world. Give it to your own damn self. <laughs> all of us just gave it to ourselves, that appreciation, that love. Just imagine. Good. Come on up to seated. Remember to wear your scarves, drink your warm liquids in the winter. Very important, warm hot teas, warm hot soups. So good for the immune system. My friend Marco, um, who is an acupuncturist, always tells me about turmeric, um, ginger, garlic, all the warming herbs, so good for you in the winter time. So those are good cinnamon, right? Okay. Solar plexus lifted, shoulders relaxed. Last nice sound vibration, inhale. On your exhalation, hands in front of the heart. Slowly take a deep breath in. Aum. Aum. Sanskrit. Sanskrit was a language that everything you speak, every sound evokes the actual essence of what is being invoked, right? So like the word akasha for space. That word isn't just a word, it invokes the vibration of that. Sanskrit chanting is beautiful. Nam myoho renge kyo. It's the Buddha's last teaching, the Lotus Sutra, that we all have Buddha nature within us, right? And in all beings. So this practice of yoga, of making ourselves nice and strong, it can kind of extend beyond that. It would be very selfish for us to just kind of worry about our own enlightenment. And this can kind of sometimes, this wisdom accumulated, can build a little contempt and a selfishness. Bodhisattva practice. Nam Yoho Renge Kyo. It kind of destroys nihilism and opens up the floodgates of compassion. So we do not have contempt for others in the world, right? We never look down on a single fly. We see the Buddha nature of all beings equally. And in doing so, we uplift and empower as we also uplift and empower others. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful winter. Stay healthy, stay strong, stay safe. Love you. <laughs>